In this lecture, uh, we're going to look at polynomial equations. We're going to start with the simplest polynomial equation, which is the equation of the first degree. Uh, this is an equation that looks like this. And uh, here we suppose that a is different from zero. Now, of course, solving this equation is quite straightforward. Add negative b to both sides. That will give you ax is equal to negative b, and then divide both sides by a, and this will give you x is equal to negative b over a. So if you have to solve something like 3x plus 2 is equal to 0, then this becomes 3x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to negative 2 thirds. And uh, with this, it's a good idea to go to the equation of the second degree. So the equation of the second degree will look like uh, this, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And here we suppose, of course, that a is different from zero. Otherwise, it's not an equation of the second degree. So um, in order to uh, solve this equation, we actually define a quantity that uh, will distinguish between the different cases. So um, it's a quantity delta, which is b squared minus 4ac. Uh, we're going to call this the discriminant of the polynomial. Or you can also say the discriminant of the equation. There are three cases that, um, uh, three possible things that can happen here. The first one is that delta is less than zero. In this case, uh, there exists no real roots. When I say roots, I mean solutions of the equation. We can use both terms. Uh, the second case is when delta is equal to zero, then uh, we have um, one real root, which sometimes we call double. And that's negative b over 2a. And the last case, maybe the most interesting one, is when we have a delta greater than zero, uh, then we have two distinct real roots, uh, which are given by the for following formula, which is known as the quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus square root of delta divided by 2a. Of course, again, you can rewrite this as minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And um, uh, let me just say that uh, uh, when delta is equal uh, to 0, uh, if uh, r is a double root, meaning b minus, minus b over 2a, uh, then there is a very nice way of factorizing uh, the polynomial. Uh, so in this case, ax squared plus bx plus c can be written as a times x minus r squared. And uh, when delta is greater than zero, if uh, r1 and r2 are the two roots, Then again, we have a very nice factorization. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to a times x minus r1 times x minus r2. But enough with uh, the generalities. It would be a good idea to do some examples and see how uh, everything applies in uh, concrete cases with numbers. So why don't we do the uh, case uh, why don't we do the following example? So solve uh, x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. I'll please pause the video, try to solve this using what we just did, and please check your solutions. Okay, so let's do it together now. We can identify a as 1, b as 1, and c as 1. And then uh, delta is 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 
which of course equals negative three. This is less than zero. So we can say there are no real roots and that's the end of the story. Let's do now another one. Uh, solve uh, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. Um, again, uh, please pause the video and uh, give it a try, and then restart it in order to see the solution. So here we have a equals 1, b equals negative 6, and c equals 9, which means that delta is equal to negative 6 all squared minus 4 times 1 times 9, which is 36 minus 36, and that's 0. Uh, so we have uh, one double root. which is given by uh, minus, now you have to put B, which is negative six over two A, which is two times one. And this is six over two, which is equal to three. And not that it's being asked of us to do that, but uh, we can also say that X squared minus six X plus nine is equal to the, um, leading coefficient one times x minus three all square. It's, it's a good idea to know that this factorization exists. Let's do a third example. Uh, let's solve uh, x square minus three x plus two equals zero. Again, please pause the video and try to solve this. And let's see. So here we have a equals one, b equals negative three, c equals two. And this means that delta will be equal to minus three square, uh, minus four times one times two, which makes it nine minus eight, also known as one. So this means that we have two real roots. that will be given by the quadratic formula. Uh, how is the quadratic formula here? Minus b, b is negative three, so minus b will be three, plus or minus square root of one, that's equal to one over two, so this is three, plus or minus one divided by two. If I follow the plus, I will get three plus one is four, divided by two will give me two. If I follow the negative one, I will get two over two is one. So the roots are one and two. And again, here we, we could notice that uh, x squared minus three x plus two can be factorized as uh, x minus one times x minus two. So um, so these are um, three examples. Let's, let's actually do one more. There's one reason to do one more here. So uh, please try to do the following example. Uh, x squared minus 5x minus uh, 1 is equal to 0. So again, please pause the video and try to solve this one. And let's see what the solution is. Uh, A here is equal to one, B is equal to negative five, C is equal to negative one, which means that the quantity delta is going to be negative five square minus four times one times negative one. And this will give 25 uh, plus four, also known as 29. So it's greater than zero. That means two real roots. And we're going to have a minus negative five, this is five, plus or minus square root of 29 divided by two. There is no way to improve the looks of these uh, solutions. 
And actually, if you ask, uh, well, uh, how do we factorize it again? It's not directly asked by the problem, but we can have this factorization. It's going to be an x minus 5 plus square root of 29 over 2 and x minus 5 minus square root of 29 divided by 2. And that's it. OK. Uh, now, obviously, one uh, could ask uh, what happens if uh, the degrees uh, go higher. And uh, the first question is, uh, do we have a formula for uh, the cubic equation? So if we have something like, um, let's say, uh, AX cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero uh, with a different from zero, then is there a formula that actually can help us uh, solve this? And uh, the answer is there is a formula, but uh, you know I would never ask you to sort of uh, memorize um, this formula in any in any particular uh, context. Uh, these, these formulas tend to be very, very, very complicated. So, so just to give you an idea, um, if we had a much simpler uh, form, so a is one and b is zero here, then uh, the solution looks something like this. It's uh, cube root of negative q over 2 plus square root of uh, q square over 4 uh, plus p cubed over 27 uh, plus a cube root of negative q over 2 uh, minus the square root of q square over 4 plus uh, p cubed over 27. That's one of the roots. And, and here, of course, there's a whole story of how you interpret the cube roots, how you choose them, and so on and so forth. The bottom line is, the reason I said this, and I might as well erase it, is to just give you an idea of the complexity of this uh, formula. And even the story behind uh, how these formulas were established is, is very, very interesting. Uh, there are different names that are uh, involved with uh, the, the history of how eventually the uh, cubic equation uh, was solved. Uh, basically, one could mention here the names of uh, Del Ferro, of uh, Tartaglia, and of course, eventually, the name of uh, Girolamo Cardano. The formula that I just wrote down is known as Cardano's formula. And uh, these formulas were established in the uh, 1500s. And um, uh, it took a while for people to not only to find them, but also to interpret them in the right way. Uh, there is, I should say here, that there is a formula for the quartic equation. So the quartic equation is ax to the fourth plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. Uh, but I will not even make an attempt to write down this formula. Um, interestingly enough, solving the uh, quartic equation uh, <laughs> in some sense might be a little more uh, uh, straightforward as a concept as solving the uh, cubic equation. Of course, its solution is eventually is based on the solution of the cubic equation. But still, that doesn't save the... Um, formula for being uh, overly complicated. What is interesting, however, is that uh, if, you, if you look at the fact that the equation of the first degree is almost trivial, the equation of the second degree is something that we all learn in high school. And then it seems that the complexity increases exponentially as the degree goes up. And I haven't even said anything about the equation of the uh, fifth degree. So the equation of a fifth degree and above was something that uh, was resisting all attempts uh, for uh, a solution. And it even came to the point where people 
started doubting that uh, a solution would exist. And that, that's, if you think about it, a, a crazy concept. I mean, well, what does it mean for a solution not to exist? And how do you even uh, show that the solution doesn't exist? And here the, st the story becomes very, very interesting. Uh, the non-solvability of the equation of a fifth degree was established by uh, Abel, but then a general theory was created uh, or was initiated, I should say, uh, by uh, a young mathematician by the name of Evariste Galois. Uh, Evariste Galois was born in uh, uh, France in uh, 1811, and um, he, is, he, had, he had a very interesting story. Um, he pretty much taught his, himself mathematics from a very uh, young age, and he was a very uh, ambitious, aspiring uh, young mathematician, uh, who, however, didn't make it to the most prestigious school of the time, which was called the Ecole uh, Polytechnique. Uh, instead, uh, he enrolled in the Ecole uh, Normale. And uh, he wrote some interesting papers that uh, he, uh, that were, um, uh, received very good um, uh, comments. And uh, he was very much interested in the problem of uh, the solution of the uh, degree five and above equation. Uh, eventually he got himself, I mean, look when he was born, uh, that's, that's about uh, uh, 30 years after the French revolution and after all the adventures that uh, uh, France had undergone uh, through Napoleon, uh, he was very much involved with the politics of the time. Uh, he got expelled from the Ecole Normale and he even found himself in prison at a certain point while he was uh, very much uh, working on uh, a theory that would, would eventually cover all other cases, uh, starting with the fifth degree and above. And uh, uh, under very uh, unclear circumstances, he was challenged to a duel, um, apparently for the honor of a young lady. Uh, the night before the duel, he wrote down some notes concerning uh, the work that he had done toward the solution of the um, equation of fifth degree and above. Uh, those notes were lost, and eventually when they were found, it was realized that he was setting the foundations for a very deep theory that eventually would solve all of these problems. He, he had not, the, the theory was not in full shape yet, but, you know, certainly Galois uh, had all the right ideas in place. Uh, unfortunately, he died in the duel. Uh, he was not even 21 years old at uh, the year 1832. Uh, now, of course, if you look up uh, the bibliography, you will see that there are many, many um, uh, books that uh, are written uh, on the theories that uh, his ideas spawned. So you, you can see about Galois theory, Galois groups. He, he, he was pretty much the, he's pretty much the mathematician that is credited with the conception of group theory, which is a very important uh, piece of mathematics. But uh, the bottom line is this. Nowadays, we do know that uh, in general, one cannot solve an equation of the fifth degree and above in any uh, direct way as we can do with equations of four degree and below. And um, the uh, mathematical theory that describes in detail and in depth uh, everything that goes on in that case is, uh, of course, known as Galois theory. And that pretty much brings us to the end of our uh, lecture of our treatment of the quadratic equation. Thanks for watching.